Hey, this is John Bollinger with Premier Guitar, and I'm with Lizzie Hale of Hailstorm. Lizzie, yeah. thank you. Thanks for inviting us here to your rehearsal hall, Anytime, right? Anytime, darling. Thanks for stopping by. We're, yeah. uh, we're making a mess and getting ready to go out on tour, undo everything all over again. So. Fantastic. Now, you just got back from a long European run. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we, we spend about 90% of our time touring, so I think that's more normal now. It's like... Yeah. The road is normal. It's now it's real life that's a little screwed up. So. Right, right, right. <laughs> it's like, oh, I got a shower at my disposal. I don't know what to do with it. Yeah. Use it for storage. <laughs> right, right. Hey, well, first of all, this guitar is your, this is your signature? Yes. This is my uh, signature Gibson Explorer. And uh, this is the one um, that you'll see out in stores, although mine is a lot yellower because I play it a lot and get in the road rash. So it's a little loved. Um, uh, i super honored that Gibson did this with me. This is something that I've been wanting to do since I was a teenager. So, um, of course, when they approached me to do a signature guitar, I'm like looking over my shoulder like, is Slash standing behind me? Are they talking to me? Um, so it was really cool. And then, of course, they're like, you know, take some time and figure out what you want to do. I'm like, I'll have it to you by Monday. I already know what I want to do. Um, so were you like a kid that drew on your notebook, picked yeah, designs of yeah, guitars? Yeah, I, I've always wanted to. At first, I think, um, at first I was thinking, well, maybe I'll do um, a Gibson Les Paul. But uh, over the past couple of years, the Explorer has just kind of become this go-to guitar it's it's um it's it's amazing like the weight is perfect you know and and nothing's good i mean i i'll show you something else later that that it was uh that if i have back problems when i'm older you'll know why but um but yeah, this is uh you know pretty pretty standard i wanted to keep the um the classic metal shape of the explorer very james hetfield um but obviously i'm a girl so kind of wanted to <laughs> class it up a little bit so yeah. um i did a white and gold aesthetics and um uh, just made it look super, super awesome. I, I wanted to have a guitar that you could see from the back row, right. you know. Um, and really, I mean, the only real differences that I made um, was uh, I did some binding on the body. Yeah, I love that. I've never seen you know, explore with kind of a tribute to uh, the Les Paul Custom, right. you know, because it just, it, I don't know, it just looks like a great hunk. It looks like a Cadillac, you know. Yeah, totally. Come on. Um, and then um, I have a Classic 57 pickups in here uh, just to give it that nice bite it's just awesome so uh, again for whatever i need to use it for i'm using um this guitar on this tour for um both <laughs> our crazy rockers and the beautiful ballads so it's a very versatile guitar yeah yeah it is so it's perfect for you i mean because it's it is a unashamedly rock and roll <laughs> guitar <laughs> dress in all black and then <laughs> everything else is white. yeah but it's funny because the one of the coolest things about doing this guitar was um i get i get letters now like every day from these little kids and a lot of little girls have gone out and gotten this guitar and um everyone's tweeting me pictures of them playing like their first gigs and have this huge guitar on them and it was, it's just awesome yeah so um to me that's that's what that's about that's what making a signature guitar is all about is spreading the love man you got to get get these kids early right, <laughs> it's right. the next generation of rock and roll we got to get them all riled up so <laughs> right yeah and i love i love it's an ebony fingerboard right with these big block correct inlays. yeah again just super meaty and um I just, I, I don't like to complicate everything up too much. You know, I'm kind of yeah. a simple gal. I guess it's because I room with a bunch of boys and you <laughs> kind of have to be. But, um, so it's part of my personality now. But, um, but yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it's one of those guitars that you just feel like a rock star when you put it on. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> cool. That is, yeah, it's so great. Because when I see people putting out like a signature guitar, which is basically just another Les Paul. It's like, why bother? Yeah, exactly. You, know? you have to have a little bit of something. You you don't want to yeah. you don't want to screw with the uh, with the legacy. Right. You know that is um, Gibson. I mean, the whole reason that we you know that we buy them is because yeah. that's the way it is. But um, but then you want to have a little bit of something you know that makes it your own. But 
No, don't mess it up. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's beautiful. So that is your number one. That's my number one guitar. Um, I'll go through a couple of my favorites here. I, I have far too many guitars, and uh, I, the, I, as I call them, investments. Sure. You know. <laughs> Let's say that our demographic. You know? That's that's. That's what we do. Exactly. It's, it's just a really cool piece of art that you get to play. Right. Um, this was actually a gift to me by my, uh, my partner in crime in my band, uh, Joe Hottinger. Um, he got this for me uh, on our first like really big tour um, going out on our first record on Atlantic Records. And so it, it was uh, really cool. It's just, it's a Joan Jett. You know, Joan Jett, signature melody maker. Um, doesn't matter how much you beat it up or how many different tunings it goes through. Right now this is in drop E because we have a song on our record called Sick Individual that for some odd reason we decided to pick up some guitars that were not in the right tuning and decided to play the song that way. Um, and uh, uh, so this is, uh, this is definitely um, a beast. You know, you can beat this one up and it still sounds great. So, so this, with one pickup, the switch? The switch is, is just a kill. Yeah, oh, oh, so really? basically you can be freaking rocking out having like everything on 10 you can have everything cranked making a little bit of noise kind of that grunge kind of punk feel and then when you're ready to get off it bam silent so you don't even have to dance with any pedals oh, it's great. like i thought that was such a cool feature that she put in because that's so you cool. know get, and con considering i'm a front woman as well so i'm like you know you're trying to you know get off on the audience and then right. oh man i'm making a bunch of noise and then you got to do a bunch of this stuff yeah. it's like Bam, just turn it off. So. And you get to do that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. That's happening. Yeah. So. <laughs> cool. And, um, and your yeah. next one. So the next one I'm going to show you, I promise I will not take you through all of them. <laughs> all of my 30-some oh. guitars. But, um, but this is pretty special. Um, I had this made. The wonderful people at Gibson made this for me. And I had this made uh, especially for one of our new songs called I, I Am The Fire. And um, I Am The Fire, what we ended up doing in the studio was I did everything on a drop A baritone. Um, so when I was doing a part in the verse, it had to be this kind of six fret stretch arpeggio thing. And so really wanted to, to do that on a standard because I'm like, oh, I don't want to do that every night. So I asked them if they could make a, uh, a standard on top and a baritone on the bottom. and. Uh, and uh, they had a lot of my same kind of aesthetics from my signature. Right. So they really did it up for me, and it's just awesome. Um, but I'm telling you what, it is a, it is a heavy guitar. <laughs> yeah. So freaking heavy. Um, but, well, that uh, looks so But it's awesome great. because you can be doing verses, you know, and then chorus comes up and just freaking have that low end rock it out. Cool. So, so this, can, this controls which neck This controls using. which neck, and then this is for pickup. Yeah. Can you get both necks at once? Yes, you can, which is really noisy. I bet. And um, out of control. Uh, you never know. I mean, I'm sure somebody much more talented than me could like do some, you know, <laughs> finger tapping on both necks. But right. I'm not there yet, so we'll figure yeah, that out. How pimp would that right? be? Right? Wouldn't that be great? Just, and then just <laughs> let me switch. <laughs> right. Yeah. You do a split. As right. Well. Right. Yeah, you should totally do that. So yeah, yeah no, it's it's awesome. Freaking. Uh, Definitely feel like Jamie Page when you put this on. Yeah, that so. could be your next signature. Maybe right? you should double down. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Double down on the signature. Right. That would be technically two. Then I'd have three signatures. Yeah, guitars. three signature, two in one. <laughs> I don't know. That is awesome. So, yeah, I love yeah, it. Can... Well, great. Well, that's uh, that. Okay, that's three awesome that's guitars. That's three of them, yes. Let's... Again, I won't bore you with the rest of them. Okay, well, let's. Can we look at your pedal board? Of course we can. All right. Okay, so this is your this is pedal my, board. My pedal board, my basic setup. Um, I, I'm kind of a simple gal, and uh, for the longest time, really all I would have is a boost wah and a tuner, which uh, the tuner pedal is by far my favorite pedal. Sure. Because it's the automatic make everything sound better pedal. You know, <laughs> it's like you really should get one. Um, every. Buddy should get one. <laughs> Make a trip to the to guitar center to spend a day there. Right. Here, you have a tuner. You have a tuner. Um, anyway, I digress. But uh, some of my of my new pedals are more out front here. This is some things I've been trying. Uh, just uh, that were on the record, and uh, again, we're embarking on. Um, you know this new record release yeah i i so, i got an uh, advanced copy it's great oh well, thank you it's very much. you know it's it's got a lot of depth to it you know thank you very yeah, much it's great um so there's a there's a little bit of a dance that uh joe and i have been doing to try to figure out how you know 
how we're going to duplicate some of this stuff live and, and uh, some of the sounds that we need. So um, uh, I'll start first uh, with uh, Oldie But Goodie, my uh, Jerry Cantrell wah. And uh, this is great because you can set it up um, for all you ladies out there. You can set it up so you don't actually have to stomp on it for it to turn on. It'll just kind of, as soon as you start using it, it'll work. And uh, that works if you're wearing heels, which if you ever really sure. want to get into that, this is the one. I will, that. yes. <laughs> um, uh, the Blue Box, um, MXR Blue Box is pretty awesome. This is the effect that I used for our um, our song, Amen. And it's, uh, it's just this really, screwed up, crunchy distortion sound that I use on uh, some of the candy in the verse. Um, uh, definitely happy to have that on my board right now, now. Is that a reissue or is that like an vintage? I, I believe it's a reissue. Um, I, this, it's a pretty old pedal. We've had it yeah. for a couple years. Um, we just have like a warehouse full of stuff and we never throw it away. So sure. when we were looking for sounds for this record and in particular uh, this song, Amen, um, just digging through the box, trying everything like that one's good. Yeah. So I'm actually not sure it might be a vintage, um, but I'm pretty sure I don't have anything too crazy vintage in my collection. Yeah. So unless that happened accidentally and yeah. I got a really good deal right. on a vintage one, probably not. Um, uh, but, it, but it is pretty awesome. And, and uh, again, I use it for the song Amen. Um, this Pog pedal is really crazy. Um, I only use it for one of our new songs called I Like It Heavy because there's this kind of... Uh, I want to say almost organ sounds, uh, you know, that that we wanted to get out of out of our guitar for this uh, particular part in the chorus. It's, it it kind of reminds me of Monster Mash. It's, it's like, du -du 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 -du, du -du -du -du, you know, and so um, wanted to make sure that um, I could do that live. And this is just it's just nuts. But the, I actually don't do this pedal justice because you can actually do so much with it. I'm pretty sure that um, Joe actually used this. Uh, throughout the the new record, um, just different sounds and everything. I'll have to ask him that for you, but um, it's just great. It's great for so much more than what I'm actually using it for. Um, uh, my my boost, my line driver. It's it's uh, it's awesome. It just it's super simple. Gives a nice clean, you know, just just a little bit of a. Uh, sheen, a little bit of yeah. the icing on the cake, so to speak, uh, for you know when I'm doing solos or whatever. Um, and uh, and obviously I have my Archer, which I'm totally in love with right now, uh, just for my distortion. Um, I get most of my sound from my amps uh, because that's the way I've always done things. You kind of start there, get something cool, and then add on top of it. Obviously, right. I don't solely depend on the distortion, um, but uh, but it's a great one. And uh, uh, I was borrowing a uh, a Klon for a while. <laughs> Wow. And uh, obviously had to give that back because there's no way I'm spending yeah. that amount of money. And this is great. It, it does um, it does a lot of the same. I hear a lot of the same uh, qualities in the Archer, so um, I'm super satisfied. It's great. With that. So no delay, nothing like that. No, I don't have any of that. Um, usually, um, I, I might in the future depends. Uh, some of these new songs I might end up adding to my board. Right now I'm kind of full uh, with my. So I'll have to expand eventually. Anything can happen. We. Our, our philosophy with pedals and a lot of the gear that we use is we, we chase after whatever gets, gets us excited. And, you know, we like switching stuff out and trying new things. Yeah. Uh, you know, maybe if I'm tired of this thing, I'll use something else. I don't know. Uh, that's that's uh, part of the dance that, that Joe and I do as far as just um, filling up space. There's only, there's two guitars, bass and drums in our band, and we don't use any tracks or trickery. So it's like... Good you know, you. what you see is what you get, and, right. and we make the most out of what we can do. So um, uh, there will be a lot of times that, you know, will be the parts that I write and I play in the studio um, and the parts that Joe and I write in the studio uh, uh, will end up switching, you know, for live to, or certain parts depending, you know, on what's going to work out best with our particular sounds. So it's kind of like I'm the meat, he's the potatoes, and, you know, it, it works out. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's Keith and Ronnie. Right, it's, so uh, we've, right. we figured out. Yeah, perfect. And you and you use this. Uh, yeah, just for my wireless, wireless uh, yeah. situation. Um, you know, I am. We went wireless because every you know everybody started tripping over cords and there's a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm actually uh, still a huge fan of just plug in and play. We did a gig uh, the other night at, at a place in Nashville here, Grimey's, and uh, just it was plug in play monitors. It just it got me so excited. Um, so uh, so yeah, I don't know. It's 
it's a wireless. Yeah. Are, <laughs> you, you, know, are you using wedges live? Or um, you know, I'm starting to to uh, integrate some of the wedges with our in ears because we yeah. have in ears as well. Um, but sometimes you just need that that yeah. feeling, something blasting in your face. So yeah, I yeah. Get so it. I'm thinking about doing both here in the next couple tours. Yeah. Cool. Well, that's a simple board. Bam. Let's uh, let's talk about the amps. Awesome. Okay, so we're in amp land. Uh, tell me about this beautiful thing. Um, this is a beautiful Marshall JCM 800, and this is um, this is this is my amp. This is uh, I, I've I've never I never stray far from the JCM 800. It's uh, it's just it's a rock and roll sound. Yeah. Marshall JCM 800. It's uh, again just classic rock and roll. Marshall Gibson, it's you just can't go wrong. Um, the I, I, we were talking about this before, you know, the wonderful people at Marshall ended up uh, calling me after I put out my signature guitar um, with Gibson, and they asked me, they're like, yeah, do do you want an amp that kind of looks like your guitar? Like we could do the, the white, you know, Tortex with the gold. I'm like, yeah, that'd be <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. So the, they're super sweet people, and um, and uh, it's great. I mean. You can totally steal my settings if you want, but um, again, um, I have a lot of stuff cranked. Um, we actually have a little bit of a gate going on here, just so that you know I'm not making a ton of noise in here. But um, but yeah, it's just yeah. it's it's you great. You do have it cranked, yeah, that's nice. Well, like I said, a lot of a lot of my sound um, uh, comes from the amp, and it's to me, I'd rather have everything sound great, even with even without the distortion, even without the boost, if everything like went. To hell, right. you know. Um, then uh, okay, we can make this work. And um, and again, this is it's such a versatile uh, uh, head. It's just awesome. You know, you can really do just about anything. Um, I'm always experimenting um, with tones and how to make that better. I feel like you know, this is something Joe and I talk about all the time. You get like used to it. Right. You know, you get used to like, oh, this sounds great. This sounds great. And then after a while, you're like. Maybe I need to make it sound better. I don't know right. how or why, but I gotta do so. So it's kind of, you know the knobs are constantly being I'm constantly tweaking. But um, are you running two four twelves with this? I saw two yeah, matching. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm running two. Uh, it depends on the venue. Yeah. And uh, and if I can get away with that, not yeah. totally. <laughs> yeah, that's a Not totally piss off my sound guy. Um, but so either way, but um, and no matter what, um, they go together and. Uh, and I keep them set up no matter what. So, yeah, you know, just um, yeah. just rocking some faces. That's, yeah. that's all we do with these. Yeah, melting faces. <laughs> I've got to get off my knees. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> all right. Well, Lizzie, thank you. Hey, and congratulations on all your success. Anytime, the new man. Thank album. You for me. Yeah, okay. New You're album. Awesome. It's called Into the Wildlife. And uh, uh, we did everything uh, kind of different this time. We ended up doing um, all the basic tracks live, just yeah. the four of us you know, running around. So, um, so yeah, check it out. I don't know. Yeah, Maybe where, you'll where, like it. Where'd you record it? Uh, we recorded it here in Nashville, um, where the producer's name is Jay Joyce. Um, oh, yeah. he actually, he did a lot of Eric Church's stuff, sure. a lot of Little Big Town, uh, Cage the Elephant, super great guy, kind of yeah. crazy rocker, chain smoking yeah. dude. And, um, he was brave enough to do this record with us. Yeah. So. Okay. So thanks for revealing all the, uh, secret tone bits. Anytime, man. All the Gibson, behind the scenes. Gibson, Marshall, couple pedals. For you. Yeah. yeah. It's all for you, man. No, <laughs> okay. thank you so much for having me. Yeah, thank you. We're going to go talk to your buddy Joe and uh, you're the yin to your yang and <laughs> see what he's that. doing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm here with Hailstorm guitarist Joe Hottinger. Joe, thanks for joining us, man. Hey, man. Thanks for having me. Hey, tell me about this very cool 335. Oh, this, um, this is a custom shop, one of their 63 reissues. And, and, uh, Lizzie actually got this for me for Christmas. It's great being in band with, you know, we're like Christmas presents, let's get guitars. Yeah. We just get each other guitars, it's fun. But uh, yeah, I saw the Joan Jett that you got her. Yeah. That was pretty you great. see the telly I got her too, it's slamming. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I, I haven't had a 335 and I've always wanted one and she's heard me bitch about that before. So yeah. <laughs> uh, my buddy Cody in the custom shop kind of built this and and uh, it, he really, you know, really went all out for me. This it's oh. this antique Pelham blue, so it's kind of greenish and awesome binding. It's a little aged and yellowed, and it's got the Jimmy Page humbuckers. Oh, great! And it's just he was like, yeah, you know, I was looking for the, you know, the straightest, straightest piece of uh, rosewood for the neck, and and you know, oh. he he did it up for me. And I first time I played it, it was just like this is 
it's just still been my favorite guitar since I got it. Really? And uh, I've got a lot great. of really great guitars, and this one just went immediately to the top of the pile. Oh, how great. It's just so much fun to play, and it uh, feels great. Hey, why do you have uh, that little strip back there? Is that a little bit of tape, just it rings. Sympathetic you know, little, ringing. Ee, yeah, yeah, you hit certain chords. A few of my guitars do, but yeah. nothing a little tape won't fix. Yeah, that's a cool little hack. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't look too bad. No, it you looks. You don't really notice it. It looks cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I so, thought yeah. That's, that's very cool. So, so that's your, your current number one. I mean, for rock stuff, it depends yeah. on the song. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Rock stuff, well, this is a rock band. Man. I always go, <laughs> well, you know, the hard, the heavier stuff. It actually sounds great chugging and. Sure. And the, the neck, or the, uh, yeah, the neck pickup is just so wide and silky. It's, it's neat. And it's those page buckers. They're just awesome. Yeah, that's cool. So the page buckers, are those, is that a Gibson pickup? Or yeah, is it a. It's a Gibson pickup, and I mean, that's. Really, all I all I know about it just uh, oh. Jimmy Page humbuckers and the the bridge is really bitey and it rips. It's just a good rock and roll guitar. Perfect. All right, so that's number one. Now, what would be hard to choose, but what would be your number two? There, you know, there's I have like seven or eight that I just love. I love them all. So I'm just I just picked out four of my favorites. This is like a '59 reissue Les Paul. Oh, that's great. And it's all aged by this guy in Vegas, McGuire, and wow. it's just really one of the... I got this at Norm's Rare Guitars in, in L.A., one sure. of the great rock, you know, one of the great guitar shops in the world, and I broke the knob off, so I'll fix that one of these days, but it's I just... kind of fits in with the whole relic thing right? anyway, right? Yeah. Self-relict, but uh, it's a beautiful top, and... Yeah. I mean, it's just one of the best sounding Les Pauls. I went, Norm had like, I wanted, you know, Jimmy Page. I wanted a classic 59-ish burst reissue because I'm not, you know, I don't have any yeah. houses to sell for a real <laughs> one. But uh, but uh, I went through, Norm has like 20 or 30 of them in his shop and kind of went through every single one of them one day. Is like, I'm getting one of these. I'm going through them all and I annoyed them all and this one just destroyed them uh, every oh. other one in there it's it quacks in all the right ways the PAFs and it's just it's, isn't it funny awesome. how like you can look at like 10 different guitars made roughly the same time mm -hmm. and one will all just different. like speak to you and you know? even acoustic you know that, that was my first test going through them all I just would hit them without plugging them in and some just ring and come to life some are just like closed right. up and and so I, I, I took the ones that came alive and I took it from there and this was the best one I found so wow. I love it yeah it's beautiful one of my and faves. pickups uh, stock and all that um you know I'm not even they're just some PAF thing I'm not even sure I'm not yeah. even gonna I speculate on what it is but whatever came in it whatever is in there is fantastic yeah you know great yeah man that top almost looks 3d yeah I mean, they're so just... cool the, the the good tops are it's awesome looking. I love that it's beat up too. Right. Something about beat up guitars, aged guitars, and they just feel better. And yeah. I love getting a new guitar that's been relic because you just bash it into thing. You know, you just don't care as much. And right. Belt rash, who sure. <laughs> Not a problem. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. yeah. Good one. Yeah. Okay, cool. Let's look at Moving number on. three. This is So a, are uh, you are you a page guy? Right. Is page Kind of your I, I like I you know yeah I, he's one of my influences for sure yeah a, a bigger one and it's uh you know I just I like music in general yeah. so yeah. like the, the telly I always wanted a uh, the mo the telliest telly that that was my goal when I when I started like really getting into collecting guitars a few years ago I want the most Les Paul Les Paul I want the most three thirty five three thirty five the telliest yeah. telly and Stratius Strat, you know, just to get have those cla like good solid classic sounds, yeah. and and uh, came up with this. There's a '50s Tele. It's a master built by Dennis Galeski, um, and uh, yeah, like like with the Les Paul, I was at Guitar Center here in Nashville. I love Nashville for the guitar stores. Right. They have they get the best used gear, the best new gear. It's it's amazing. And yeah, there's so Craigslist in this town is yeah, great. It's, an, it's, yeah. An, it's insane. So. Uh, I was in there talking to my buddy Tony in the Platinum Room, and I was like, yeah, I really want an awesome telly, you know, and they got like 50s and 60s tellies on the wall from anywhere like 
eight to fifty thousand dollars, right? Depending on how deep you want to go, and then they have the custom shop stuff on the other wall, and kind of started over there. And this one caught my, my eye initially. I just thought it looked great. I love the red and white. It's like a Corvette, you know. And um, kind of played through all the all of them. This this stood out. Just the neck is fat, and the frets are huge, and uh, just the feel of the guitar stood out to me first. Did the you know the non-plug-in test on a bunch of them and yeah that's loud st- yeah it's really loud it it's a it's a right weight too it's it's not too heavy and it just resonates and what really I remember when I first played it hitting a chord and how much vibration I had in my left hand you know it just you, you just feel this thing and so I plugged it in and played it and then I I compared it to some of the vintage ones I had the 60s tellies and they sounded awesome and, but they did not sound like Twelve to twenty thousand dollars better, and, right? And so this was a no-brainer for me, and I've been using it ever at every show ever since. Yeah, and touring with like a twenty thousand dollar guitar is crazy. Scary. Yeah. So that, so it's nice to be able to take these out and give them a little more character, beat them up a little more. I love how they custom shop does the necks and like sands them down so they're all super smooth, nothing sticky on there. Yeah. yeah just like an old great. friend. That's yeah, cool. It's nice. It's become, I, and I've put my share of dings in it now, but, you know, just becoming mine a little bit more every day. Yeah, yeah, beautiful, man. What a telly. Okay, the telly is telly. The telly is telly. And then over here, you're next in line. Here's a White Falcon, obviously. I just got this last November, and it's one of those dream I, guitars that you always want, you know? I saw you play that in a video, I think. Uh, oh yeah, the, I used it in the apocalyptic video. Yeah. And uh, I didn't actually, on the record I used, uh, I have a Johnny A over there. Oh. Custom shop Johnny A that's awesome looking. Yeah. Maybe I'll go sneak that in for a quick thing. <laughs> Cause it's really amazing. And uh, that's what I used on, uh, on the record. But for the video I pulled this out cause I just got it. And they're just so awesome looking. Yeah. Just a white Falcon. I chose the, uh, the non, Bigsby or I don't know what they use. Yeah. Vibrating bridge just to help me out a little for hitting it hard, you yeah. know. Because you want to play in tune. I do, I do <laughs> like playing in tune. My favorite pedal on the board is the tuner. It makes yeah. everything sound great. No, but uh, you know, it's a white falcon. It's it's binding on both sides, binding in the F holes, all up the neck. Just a beautiful instrument. Yeah, it's cool too, and this is like a thinner than, than some of the... It uh, is, it's not super thick, it's a newer one that they yeah. made, and it sounds great. And with the, with the uh, filter, I think they call it a Filtronic? Or yeah, Filtertron. Or Filtertron, something like that. Those pickups, it's just something totally different than everything else I have, and it's, it's a nice, it's nice to have it, have the mix. And right, I yeah. just like guitars, I like playing all the, all the ones, every different feeling one, every different sounding one, yeah. I want them all. <laughs> yeah, I get it, man. Yeah, totally. That's awesome. Well, hey, that's while we're here, let's look at these very cool lamps that you're plugging let's do into. It. Are you running both of these in stereo? I am running both. Uh, you know, they could be stereo. If I, I, I don't run them in stereo. I go back and forth. Okay. Um, not for any reason other than you get phasing going on. I, I don't know. Yeah. We, I just don't. I'm used to back in the day before I had techs, you know. Yeah. I didn't know how to figure half the stuff out, so I go, I get my sounds and go back and forth between the two, and um, and so you know, it's just it's this tour, it's this album cycle. I just got these two that I'm using. I love how they both tilt back. I think it's fantastic. yeah, I love so the tilt back. I'm like a Fender kick right now. Yeah. So starting out, this is my Tone Master. I got this while we were making this last record. Jay Joyce, our producer, had one, and he just had it all done up and. Tone Masters are something Fender made, the custom shop made in the 90s only. And I, you know, I don't know the full story behind them, but my guess is that it was, it was them kind of trying to out-marshal Marshall, you know? Right. And they're such a cool rock and roll amp, and uh, they just sound amazing. And like I said, Jay had one, and, you know, I brought all, I have a ton of amps in storage, and I brought them all to the studio and ended up using this for almost all the rock stuff. Well, eventually this one. I liked his so much, I was like, I need that. And, found one on eBay, this one on eBay. It's an early serial number, like in the 200s, and uh, it actually sounded better than his, so we just oh. ended up using this one for the rest of the record a- after that. And Great. It's out here on the road. I, I haven't even put different tubes in. It's what the guy sent me in North Carolina, and it just sounds 
awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I love that vintagey look with a modern tone. It's really yeah, cool. Yeah, it really rips, and I love how that you know the head the the head attaches yeah to the two twelve, and you screw it on, and you can kick it back on its legs. And yeah, I just think it's something different. You know, we do all these hard rock tours, and there's metal bands with stacks, and we got these little fenders tilted back and still yeah. ripping. I don't know. Yeah, it looks like Brian Setzer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's cool. And I use that, that's my, I just use that for the dirty channel, and I use this for the cleaner channel or just to have a different tone sure. makeup for different songs. This, this is one of the new 68 reissue twin reverbs oh, that sure. uh, Fender just came out with. It's got the little silver binding on the inside, which I think looks so cool. Yeah, and they have like <laughs> a, um, they're, they have more headroom. Yeah, right? they, they hot rotted the, what, what is this circuit? The, there's the vintage and the, the custom circuit over here to yeah. make it more like a basement. So I'm, I use that. And oh, you cool. can still use the uh, vibrato and verb oh, cool. on that side, which is cool. And I usually have my little pedal out here and yeah. go on and off of that. But um, this thing rips. It, I rented a, a regular twin reverb in Europe when we were just there. And I, I mean, I couldn't even use it. I really like their hot rod circuit. It just, yeah. I mean, the, hum, the humbuckers have a growl. The telly is clean. Yeah. But you know, it's just it, it, the guitar, it, suits different guitars really well it's neat how great to have those two different very different voices in one amp. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's it's amazing and uh i highly recommend it the 68 reissue cool it's at. and is this a backup a <clears throat> right now this is my backup head this is awesome uh this is actually a 74 marshall uh, so here's the story on it i i got it from my buddy tony at guitar center yeah and uh I guess there was a guy in the early 90s was on tour with Alice in Chains and he was asking Jerry, he's like, what is with your Marshall? He's like, oh, I had this guy, Reinhold Bogner, modify it in LA. So this guy found a 74 Marshall, just like Jerry's, like I guess they have really close serial numbers, sent it to Reinhold and it came back like aqua and it said Bogner real big. And I guess from what I hear, it's one of the first 30 or 40 or so that he ever mod wow. you know, made. So it's kind of a historical amp, which is really cool, and it rips. You know, it's a it's a modded '74 Marshall, and it sounds awesome. Wow, so great. I really like it, and I really like that too. And half time, I don't even know which one I want to use because <laughs> I like them so much. So I, I'm I'm using this one right now, and if this goes down, which it will, everything goes down sure. at some point on the road. That's back there, and it's ready to rock, and I know it's going to rip. You know, it'll be good. That's a good problem to have, to have all these different amps <laughs> that you love. I know. Yeah. I, want, I wanted to bring more out, but it's just like, I, I want to get super complicated, but then I also, as soon as we start getting in, I'm like, keep it simple. Don't right. get too complicated. It's just going <laughs> to mess everything up. Right. Keep it simple. Which cool. I have trouble well, doing. Well, speaking of complicated, let's talk about your pedal board. Let's go. Okay. okay, so we're at the mothership pedal board. Yep. Tell me the whole enchilada, man. Where does it start? I got a little. I got a little weird. <laughs> Every year I get weirder with my pedals. I used to. I swear to God, I, when I started touring, I was like, I got this. It was a tube screamer, a boost, and a wah, right. and a tuner. And I, and I made it a little board, and it fit in my. You know, it's great. And I was yeah. like, it's all I need. <laughs> and uh, here we are, a few years later. It starts with this wireless, comes out of there, and and goes into my Bradshaw switcher. Head Bob Bradshaw. At Custom Audio Electronics build me this. Um, it's controlled by the MIDI controller on the floor. We'll get to that. But that just, basically all that does is choose which pedal I want to, uh, I want going into the amps, you know? Perfect. And uh, so the first one, loop one, starts out with this Carl Martin compressor limiter. It's a well-known pedal. It's awesome, uh, you know. Just put it in a box sure. when, when you need to. I don't yeah. compress that much, but on some of the cleaner stuff, I like to, yeah. you know, like control the dynamics. Like probably with the telly more than with the, yeah. yeah. Exactly. And um, what's, what's after that? I think my boost is, no, I have my pog next. Um, on the new record, I use a lot of octave stuff, uh, which I haven't used ever before, and it's been, it's, it's awesome. I've been enjoying it. Uh, just a different sound, it's a little fresher and. Sure. And it's interesting to see some guitars work better with it than others. It's been right. fun, like, oh, I should pick another guitar for this. Like the <laughs> solo and apocalyptic, I use it in the verse and sick individual and amen for the choruses. I don't know, I, I'm using it all over the new record, so yeah. cool. you can hear it. Um, 
From there, we go to the Custom Audio Electronics Boost Line Driver. That's kind of my solo boost if I need a little extra sustain or punch on a solo. And Bradshaw, I think he puts those in like every system, right? I, you know, I had that. I've had that way longer than this one. Really? Than a Bradshaw board. Um, I just almost every Bradshaw board I've seen has oh, one of those. One of those. The, yeah. Because they just make everything better. Yeah, they do, they do. He's so talented. He's awesome. Yeah. Um, and I've I've had shootouts with other booths, and it just beats it every time. Even the other cross, custom audio electronics booths, the ones with the distortion pedal, this one just sounds better to me. Huh. Smoother, whatever. This is my Tube Screamer. It's a TS-808 reissue. Um, man, I've tried so many distortion pedals, and that one, I just always go back to it. I've yeah. got piles of them because I... It's just, I, I like running the amp just under where I'm comfortable. You know, I want it to be a little bit gainier, and then I just throw a little bit of gain on with that, and it always puts it in the sweet spot for me. Tried and true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, this is a, another Carl Martin. This is the hot driving boost. I use that as another boost uh, for just a different different flavor boost it, it gets a, it gets harsh and crazy and it's kind of fun sometimes sure yeah <laughs> I, I like it I like it with solo sometimes when it's out of control like if I pull off it's just gonna go <laughs> I like just being on the edge sometimes it forces you to just you play different it's, yeah it's fun and then I just have some effects I got the Van Halen flange and the phase and then I got a regular chorus pedal and I don't know I use them in and out a little bit here and there sure now the MIDI I have a MIDI I just got this, this uh, what are they called? I call it the G unit because I think I'm funny, but it's G major, <laughs> the TC Electronic G major. And I used to have a Line 6, the M13 here, and I MIDI'd that out and just had a few different effects that I think you could only do six with the MIDI. And it broke, which turned out to be awesome because I got this kind of on a whim. I didn't really research it or anything. and. I started using it yesterday, yesterday morning, and it's awesome. Oh, really? I, you can save up to 100 user presets to... Oh, cool. It's like having an extra 100 pedals. So every single song, I can label it, as I've been doing, like different, if I want a you know, different kind of delay or reverb or color, like a flange or any sort of modification. It does pitch shifting and there's a compressor, a noise gate, chorus. Oh, that's great. It's fantastic. You can do combinations of any of them and... I've, I've just been so impressed with different, like, thicker and more colorful tones I've been getting. Right. Better, better than I've ever had before, so that gets my two thumbs up. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> so, and you've oh, got that forgot as about, well. Oh, forgot about the Carl Martin Echo Tone. This, I pretty much use this as, like, a, a little slap, you know? Yeah. It does so much more, but I got it up here, and it's got the tap tempo and everything, but I've just been, I like having just a little slap on... Sometimes right. I just throw it on. Sometimes I leave it on for a song. I don't know. Yeah. I just, I don't, it's fun to thicken it up sometimes. Sure. So. Yeah, awesome. Oh, I forgot the cathedral reverb too. Uh, Electro harmonics. It's whatever, whatever kind of reverb you want, you know. And Are you running the verb on the amps as well? No. I mean, sometimes with the twin, I'll come yeah. over and turn that on. I don't know. I, yeah. I'm all over the place. <laughs> Every day, I kind of do something different and... It's more fun that way. Yeah, I get it, man. Yeah. <laughs> My tech isn't, you know, he might, he kind of rolls his eyes at me, but sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cool. Well, great. Well, let's see how you control all this stuff over here. Yes. Let's. All right. So this is the mothership right here. This is the controller. This controls all the pedals we just looked at and uh, a few more little doodads. But uh, this is the RST MIDI foot controller built by Bob Bradshaw, Custom Audio. and. These things, it's been great. I've had this now for two or three years, and it, you know, all my buddies recommended it to me because I was, I had all, you know, all these pedals I've been getting. I was hooking them all up, and I was looking into getting the little looper pedals, you know, where you yeah. can hook in like ten of them and then choose which, you know. Yeah. And my guitar buddies who know more than me, they were like, "Dude, just get a MIDI switcher. It's not, you know, don't run all that cable. You don't. That just degrades your sound big time. Yeah. And just do it with a MIDI thing and." I was like, I don't even know what that means, the MIDI thing. <laughs> so it was a bit of a learning curve for me, but sure. <laughs> I love this. It, it runs in two different modes. When I first got it, you know, I got the 16 channel. I was like, all right, 16 different pedals and then some combinations of each, you know. Right. And, and I used that, I did it that way for like two or three weeks when the tour started. And every single song I could not remember, even if it was labeled, I'd sit there and like read the labels and totally miss the cue. Like, which one am I hit? <laughs> 
and I just couldn't get it in my brain which one to hit. So did an experiment and I went into the other mode and it's song mode and uh, everything was immediately easy after oh, that. Nice. <laughs> it just takes a little bit more work, but basically yeah, we put the set list in. Oh. Like uh, if I was gonna play what, what, oh, do miss, scream. Miss the misery. <laughs> you scream. Where is it? It's in there somewhere. Am I going up? Scream. Oh, there it I is. Okay, oh, I knew. Yeah, nice. You know, it okay. blinks till you hit it, and I've got it labeled intro, riff. Let's go something yeah. quieter. Intro, riff, verse, pre-chorus, chorus, bridge, solo. Then I have what the fuck. Yeah. And uh, that's just whatever. But um, basically, that's how, how I do it. I start the song. A lot, of, a lot of songs, I don't change the tone too much, so I just program them all kind of the same. But, but if you go into direct, you can choose which amp you want, any one of the pedals in the line, and then... Uh, God, that's great. Yeah, this is, my, this is for the, the G Power, the TC Electronics. Right. Do hit that, and I can choose in, you know, what MIDI number to, that, I'm gonna, that I programmed already for it to go to. So I have had like 100 different pedals just in that thing alone. And uh, it's just handy. It yeah, makes everything great, easy man. for me. No thinking, pedal switching. Which the no less thinking, I think I, on stage, the better. <laughs> right. No thinking, just playing. That's great. And I got my tuner. That's always on. Running out of the tuner, out of the, the volume pedal. There's a Dunlop volume pedal. They're awesome. Yeah. Uh, Jerry Cantrell, wah. Love it. Uh, we got a, I got a million wahs, and that one is my, That's currently one. my favorite. Cool. This I have not tried yet, but I'm going to. Uh, we have an awesome fan named Jenna who made me a fuzz pedal. How cool is that? It's here. I'm ready to plug it in one of these times. Look at that little hailstorm swirling oh, mirror. Love that. Love the uh, side mirror thing. On. That's Called great. it the Angry Beaver. It says, damn it. Uh, it's supposed to sound like a big muff mixed with something else she told me, but can't wait to check it out. I will. That's very cool. <laughs> Our fans are the best, aren't they? Yeah, that's, that's a cool fan. This is a slicer. Who makes it? It's Boss. Boss makes it. It's a SL20 slicer. And uh, I had never even seen that before until we got in the studio. And Jay Joyce had one. And I literally use it for like one little bit in uh, New Modern Love. It's like, ding, I'll show you later what it does. But it's basically like a hard tremolo. And you, yeah. and you can choose all these different patterns. And, and the tap tempo right there to fall in line and hold it down and turn it on. It's awesome. It's uh, such a neat little thing. But cool. all these really weird hard tremolos you can mess with it's yeah and there's mods in there i even even delved into what i can all do yet but but uh you know that'll be out on stage with me cool. and little fishman i love the fishman people they're awesome for when we play acoustic it's a little preamp direct box yeah you can make it sound as good as you want it to be awesome acoustic man. yeah great That's, what a great rig that's it. Well, hey, man, congratulations on all the success. You guys are Probably killing here. it, man. Grammy winners. The whole, <laughs> it's a big deal. Wow. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> right? It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and the new album is great, man. So Thank you. Congrats. Appreciate it. Okay, till next time. Don't forget to sign up for PG Perks, your all-access pass to exclusive gear giveaways and discounts on PremierGuitar.com.